We all know those videos about beating Pokemon Platinum, White, Emerald, whatever with a single Pokemon. Well, those are pretty cool and whatnot, but how about we take it up a notch and beat an old Pokemon game with a new Pokemon, especially from Gen 9. Let's do it with Iron Maw. And today we're playing Pokemon Platinum and trying to beat it only with the Iron Maw. Let's see how it goes and if it's possible. I'll be writing bullet points and script as I go. So yeah, a little bit of mention about how I made it. I made it by research tutorials, posts and whatnot about Gen 4. For ROM hacking. After multiple hours of effort, I finally did it. Sound, move pool, cries, kind of stats, and whatnot. And it was a pretty big mess with some moves and abilities. Ability, I instead of the Protosynthesis thing, I added Chlorophyll or Draught being possible abilities since they kind of match the same thing except being separate. And moves like lunge, for example, I replaced with the closest examples or moves. Like instead of lunge, I put attack order in the move pool. Anyways, let's just move on. This ROM link is in the description and let's finally start. Now, of course, here is the actual Iron Maw. Here is the name, stats, of course the actual sprite, type, all of that. Of course, the start of the video will be pretty quick since it has a high total base stat and we'll move quickly through the video because of that. And speed up is pretty cool and based and I got limited time for the video anyways since I got school and whatnot. It's like having rare candies in Nuzlocke. Okay, it's been kind of looked down upon but it's kind of okay. It helps in the end. I'll be nicknaming Guy and Off as a Predacon. Most of you probably know the reference so let me know in the comments if you actually caught it. Speaking about catching, check out what I found in the Pokemon. Hey, this is actually pretty cool. I think sh you should do this because you get a 100% catch rate. Pretty cool. Let's get the journal quickly, finish up the tutorial, and hey, we're learning Silver Rind on level 7. Usually it's struggle bug, but you know what I said in the beginning. We enter Jubilee, meet Looker, give the parcel to our rival Glitch, which I named because I struggled with that particular thing a lot, which was painful, and beat up some kids. Hey, sounds pretty cool. Finally get all of the coupons for the pokage and beat up my stupid rival's ass. After that we finally move on, beat up some trainers and get rock smash. Let's move on straight to the gym leader and hey actually a random fort. That's kind of cool that I can just make custom things and use it as content like this video. Anyways let's head to the rock gym and beat up some trainers and battle roar. Now I forgot to heal but this should still be easy despite the type disadvantage. My strategy is to use silver wind and hope for a boost but I still want to the Geodude, get a lucky rock from Miss from Onyx and defeat it with the second silver wind. Now that didn't work out but I tried to get a bird with ember. Didn't matter in the end as I still defeated it with the same old silver wind and lived with 3 HP. Learning fire spin on level 14 instead of ember. Great! Moving on, we heal up, then head to Jubilife City on the road to Gym 2 and bump into Team Galactic. They were such a joke, I just spam Silver Wind and Battle to get Omniboost, easily get it and sweep them. Moving through Route 204 to the cave to beat up some rocks. Beat up all the trainers, the duo too, and get into Floroma Town. Oh hey, more Galactic Rounds. Time to whoop up them to help out the honey guy and get the Windworks key. Also buy some honey to help out the local businesses. You know, just to be nice and all. Moving up to the Windworks and using the key to show the power of renewable energy with Iron Maw by clapping some Galactic Grunt cheeks. Finally getting to Mars with no healing again. Yay, I forgot. I tried Silverwind Omniboost but ran out of PP, then spammed Gust against the Zubat, then spammed Fire Spin against Pure Ugly only to miss twice and get first faint. I gave Oranberry and tried again, got zero boosts, yay RNG against Zubat, fainted again thanks to crit, forgot to save before and lost the goddamn Oranberry, yay. I went to train up against some Badoo to get some special attack EVs but gave up quickly since they spawned rarely and 
battle against everything. As soon as I did that, of course, Badoos started to pop up again. Yay, awesome game. Got level 20 and tried again. Got the Omni boost round 1, got the second boost with the last Silverwind PP, then spammed Acid until I won easily. Love me some good old Pokemon RNG. Finally getting into a turn of forest, I meet up with a Bay Cheryl and use the opportunity to grind up against trainers with no struggle. Grinded mostly against Badoo yet again and use the free heals opportunity to get to level 28 so that I can learn attack order and replace it with Gust. After finally training up, I headed straight to the grass gym. Easily sweep the trainers, now it's time to battle Gardenia, the second gym leader. As usual, the strat is to spam Silver Wind and hope for the boost. But in the end, I just demolished her team with Silver Wind and a bit of acid. This is probably the easiest battle that we'll get gym wise. So yeah, I savored every second of it. But now let's move on. Whoa! First ever Pokemon fusion? Yeah, nothing special. Oh hey, look at Cyrus. Even better, it's Cynthia. After some average dialogue, we get a HM4 cut. Badoof, are you ready to slice up some Minecraft bedrock tier indestructible trees that have a kryptonite level weakness to a simple slice? Oh yeah, that's my guy. After showing a disc to Badoof, we slice up the petty trees and move into one of many galactic bases. Destroy the team's monthly budget by whooping them and finally moving up to battle the first admin. Jupiter, without healing of course. Now I'm just starting to do it on purpose. Accidentally. <laughs> After starting the battle with the good old silver wind, only to end up spamming attack order. What did you expect? Well, I missed attack order because of smokescreen, so I guess that's something different. Anyways, I try again, and second time, and the Wheel of Fortune, that is the Pokemon RNG, turns out great. At this point, I'm not even complaining. We get an egg from Cynthia, which is cool since I was hungry. But more importantly, for the heroic deed of saving a filthy casual, we gain a bicycle, which will speed up the game. Always appreciated. Moving on to the cycling road, I use the opportunity to get some tasty XP. So that takes a while, but of course is worth it in the end while also cleaning up beneath the bridge for some extra taining and also getting poison barb, which will come in handy. Going for the cave, we say hi to the stalker Dawn and walk up quickly to Heart Home City, get a shell bell for battles that poison moves won't help out, and with no break we head for the third gym. I equip the shell bell since ghost type Pokemon resist poison type moves, so acid won't be as effective. I clean up all of the trainers for XP yet again. I learn Screech on level 35, forget it, and sneak through the gym to battle Pantina. But in the middle of that, my egg expiry date hits, so time to throw it out. Oh man, I wanted to make a dish after the gym victory. <laughs> Anyways, let's battle the third gym leader. As you already know, the strat is to hope for an Omni boost, then try to sweep with an attack order and sun boosted fire spin combo, only to lose attempt 1 due to missing more fire spins than landing. Maybe I should have forgotten it instead of Ember. Attempt 2 works out a bit better with an Omni boost against Miss Magius and a crit attack order to finish it off. Then comes out Haunter, which was an anticlimactic two shot with fire spin. Looks like the biggest enemy is the RNG. What a plot twist. Not really. But quickly returning and turning on the recording, I beat up every trainer and stumble into the Lost Tower for an extra beating, later reaching Celestion Town. Top right, low, lower left, T top right, yeah, top left, lower left, oh, sorry, I casually was just writing down the Celestion Ruin text to get stuff like a nugget and most importantly HM for the fog. I am not struggling with a stupid fog in this challenge, no way. Now time to move on for some more AEXP gains. I stock up on some Moo Moo milks since they are a great deal, although I only heal outside of battle anyway, so it's not that important. Moving through the rainy route with some simple battles, I reach the city with the next gym, Balestone City. I go to heal up and... Wait, why am I getting told about infected Pokemon? There's no way that I... I, I got... P 
poking us? Well, EV training is going to be easier if I remember about it later. Awesome, looks like I got a Porygon thanks to speed up. Time to say hello to the PC. Anyways, I go to the department store to buy some TMs with the fat stacks I got from the battles. I get protect, light screen, fire blast and solar beam. This is about to be fun. I instantly teach the latter two and our precious mob is now an absolute menace. Attack order and the stupid fire spin are now gone. Bye bye! I get 1000 coins from the game corner to get metronome, since many battles require trivial spamming, so an attack boost for that same thing will come handy. With a higher power level than the Poke God itself, I walk up to the 4th gin and destroy all the trainers, then stumble to the leader Maylin. And no surprise, she gets obliterated with a sweet combo of solar beam and fire blast in the sun. In the middle of the battle I learn discharge and replace it with silver wind, since it is pre-OP for stat gains and it shouldn't have been here in the first place. Time to say goodbye and yeah maybe drought was a bit too much but if i knew more rom hacking then that would be no problem anyways turns out dawn is getting bullied so i quickly helped her out in the result we find the hm4 fly in the front room for the galactic team warehouse so there's that on to more interesting stuff i move down the routes and head for pastoria city mostly for the fifth gym with crasher wake but in the meantime it's time for another serving of butt whooping for the unfortunate trainers along the way while serving a nice dish of acid in the dining place, my little HM buddy that I also use in double battles, since you can't do them without two Pokemon, evolved. I use defense coral so he has no useful input, don't worry. By passing the beach with some trainers, I realize that the road to Pestoria is shorter than I remember and arrive in it, or it's just the speed up of doing its job. I'm not complaining so let's just go to the gym, but of course an annoying glitch pops up right before, so we with some simple fire blasts and solar beams, it's no sweat. Entering and walloping all of the average H2O enjoyers, I pedal up to the big lad himself, Crash or Wake, the fifth gym leader. I start up the battle without healing of course, and only to sweep with some discharges and solar beams. Together with Gardenia, these were the easiest battles, funnily enough even though it was a water type gym. Heck, I would even say it was easier. Hey, looks like someone hasn't felt the taste of loss since the rascal is blowing up random stuff. I mean it sounds fun but Game Freak said no no, so time to play some cat and dog. Only in the end to guess what, beat him up. Anyways, right after I obtain the secret potion for the Psyducks. On the way back I catch a Staravia for the fog and fly, right after also using up the potion so that I can move on. Also finally get to use the previously mentioned the fog. I do love me some annoying mechanic avoidance. You know the deal, knock out the lights out of all these trainers and jog through the route with these. And while doing that I learn move which is a massive upgrade on level 49, Sludge Bomb which of course I replace with acid. Farewell soldier. With a quick pace I reach Celestic Town and go straight to the ruins to stop the spaceman and hand the old charm back to Cynthia's grandmother. After checking out the ruins we see Cyrus which blabbers about his IRL fan fiction and starts to LARP by battling me. In which his script goes wrong since he lost. Better fix it up chief. Anyways I obtain sir and head for Canalave City. But Right before that I clean up the trainers before it with some nice slaps made by my mobile solar panel. Right as I enter the city and heal up I head straight for the gym and guess what I find another glitch. The game is so glitchy looks like Scarlet and Violet aren't on their own after all. <laughs> Anyways, the 6th gym. Just like before, I enter and have combat with all of the gym members for the sweet XP nectar, then puzzle up to the gym leader which is Byron. With the iconic phrase of I started without healing, we start the battle against Magneton on which I lose my last fire blast. Against Steelix, I use solar beam to one shot and the big boy Bastiodon survives my solar beam and metal bursts me. Damn that fella is tankier than I expected. Attempt 2 goes the same except I chip it with discharge, end up paralyzing it 
and dodging the attack because of it. Man, I love RNG. Also get flash cannon, which I and Moth can learn, so that maybe could be useful later. I forgot to hit record for this segment, I'll try my best to recreate it, sorry. Leaving the fun content behind and heading into more story, I head to the library for a lure dump, but of course getting a HM strength right before that. While getting the exposition, we hear an explosion and split up to hit for each lake to check out what happened. Me specifically going to Lake Valor. While not being able to do anything about the poor Magikarp, I whip a galactic grunts and head for the admin Saturn, which also gets bruised from yours truly with a nice discharge and two fire blasts. Now that we are done with Valor, I head to Verity to help out Dawn while making a beatdown on the galactic chumps and the admin Mars. Golbat goes down from discharge, in the middle Predacon wants to learn metal sound on 56, which I forget for now. Fire blast the Bronzor and Solar Beam pure ugly after it uses fake out. And with the final lake lift, I head for Snowpoint City and with no rush, head for the gym first, I head through the Mount Coronet Caves and the Snowy Routes that also have some trainers that have a painful play date with you know who. Meet Maylin while on the way, thankfully remember to pick up Rock Climb and arrive in Snowpoint City. After a visit in the Pokemon Center, I arrive at the 7th gym and with no issue I clean up the Ice Gym trainers while clearing the puzzle so that I can reach the he 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 ha name gym leader. Candice! There, I said it. What you gonna do about it? I start the battle off with a smoky fire blast and a grilled fire blast with a nice seasoning of fire blast and a smooth finisher called fire blast. Oh, the gym is already over? Never mind, this was the easiest battle. Now that my dumb butt learned my lesson, I finally remembered to turn on my recording and move on. I catch an another B battle to use rock climb and head for the final admin at the lake. Witness another smart person getting rid of glitches, I learned that they are regrouping at Veilstone. You know the story, head to the destination, meet Looker and head for the warehouse. Go through it and defeat all of the grunts and grab the galactic key so that I can enter there headquarters. The same deal of Grunt Pokemon game ending happens while also grabbing some items and moving through the rooms until I reach the big speech room with that wagged blue haired fella Cyrus. He said something. Your life is nothing. You serve zero purpose. You should kill yourself now. I don't know, I didn't pay attention. And after that, I head further till I reach the Master Larper room, use the Galactic Key to enter and battle Cyrus. Sludge Bomb KO against Sneasel, KO with Discharge the Crobat and Honchcrow, easy. Right after that, I run into his secret lab, battle Saturn by sweeping with Discharge and free the late Guardians. Now that we are done with that, I head to Celestic Town, get a Wise Glasses and Max Repels. Then remember that I need to go from the Earthburn side and after that I take a long trip to the spear pillar by tracking through and up Mount Coronet. In the meantime learning Morning Sun on level 63 but I forget it. Also don't forget to defree the grunts with nice blasts against them right before I reach the mountain top. Now that I arrived I head forward, battle yet again two of the admins together with a rival with zero effort which was only spamming discharge and fire blast. Oh yeah it was also with no heals before the fight, also getting free heals straight after, so yeah, I witnessed the guillotine cutscene, which everyone probably has already seen, so let's skip that. After the pretty cutscene, I head for the distortion world, in which I move through it with some puzzles scattered in the middle and finally reach Cyrus. After having a chat with Cynthia, I engage in battle with him. Let's do this one more time. Discharge against Houndoom in two moves, one shot Gyarados with the same move, counting also Honchcrow, and Melt Weavile with a nice fire blast. And for his Ace Crobat, discharge and boom, breeze simple. After that, I head to encounter Giratina, and just for a little bit of enjoyment, I battle with it and defeat it so I can feel a tad bit of challenge. Guess what? Solar Beam worked pretty nicely since RNG blessed with a crit on the second move. So who's ready for the final gym? Flying to Pastoria gym, hit straight through the town to reach Route 222, you know the deal with the trainers that happens and reach Sunny Shore City. The Elite 4 member Flint tells me that the gym leader is bored. Cuff cuff skill issue and that I should challenge him. I head to the lighthouse, talk to him, in result he goes back to the gym and I quickly follow. After struggling with the puzzle longer than I would need to, I finally reach Volkner, the 8th gym leader. The signature trait of not healing is still
still active, so I start a battle with that disadvantage. I use Solar Beam against Jolteon and result one-shooting it. Next up is Electivire, which I cook with the Sun, Wise Glasses, Stab Boosted, Fire Blast. Knowing that, we got Luxray, which feels the burn too. The final Pokemon Richu comes out, which also learns how to take some heat. Damn, that 140 special attack stat is really carrying this, but Drought can't be forgotten as well. Yet again, I'm sorry if you feel that I shouldn't have done this, and these results start to make me think crawl Chlorophyll, co -co 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 -co, whatever, would have been better. But it's too late for that, no? So yeah, the finish line is near, so let's close this up the way it is, and the important thing is, it's having fun. Although, yeah, Chlorophyll would have been better, I agree. Well, 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 it's finally time to head to the Elite Four. But first, got to beat the victory road. Before I head forwards, I use all my berries to decrease my defensive stats and go beat up some Roselius for special attack EVs. Then I speak to Glitch and the Johto Gym Leader Jasmine to get the final HM for Waterfall. So now we can go the journey to the victory road. With a sleek waterfall to the entrance, I reach the victory road. With a nice heal up and zero extra preparing, I enter victory road. While going through it, I reach level 70 and learn air slash which is replaced with hurricane i forget it since i think the moveset is good for now but i have hard scales so if necessary i'll be able to relearn it later going through the victory road by having some nice battles against trainers and navigating through the caves messing with annoying puzzles and having to heal a lot in between in result before you know it we have made it to the building of the pokemon league i start off preparations by saying goodbye to my hm pals use all all my PP ups on Fire Blast and Sludge Bomb. I don't want to buff Solar Beam more than needed since it shouldn't be that good for me, anyways, unless it's totally necessary. I also use up all my rare candies, earn Bug Buzz on level 77, which I replace with Discharge since that type will be useful against Lucian. With all the rare candies, I end up on level 78. I equip Wise Glasses and also sell everything unnecessary, end up with 369,000 Poke Dolls and buy plenty of potions and subscribes just for fun. I battle the glitch as the last preparation and actually lose to it and it's Snorlax's earthquakes since I missed that goddamn fire blast. I sure hope that isn't any foreshadowing. Anyways, I try again and land a fire blast to one shot Snorlax. The rest go easily down too. Finally, I feel relief for getting rid of all of the glitches. Last thing before the members of Elite 4. I I perform a good luck charm by finding a Magikarp and giving it a good home. Ah. That feels nice. Now that we are finished with everything else, time to test our might with starting the battles against the Elite Four. The first opponent is Aaron and his pesky bugs. Should be pretty obvious, but with some scorching fire blasts, he easily goes down. Let's see if the next member, Bertha, will be a bigger challenge. Although I got Solar Beam, a single slip up can be fatal and the possibility of a sandstorm is also a possible finisher for us. I start the battle a bit nervous, but confident. First First comes out Wishcash, Solar Beam does its job. The one after is Golem, which goes down to the same thing. So good so far. Third Pokemon is Rhyperior, which also has a double weakness to Grass. Not over yet though. Fourth comes out Gliscor, on which I use my last Fire Blast. In result, it doesn't survive, since I got a crit on top. Goddamn. Finally, Hippowdon and Sandstorm come in. My best bet is to use Solar Beam and hope that I survive. With a nervous click, I use it, take an Earthquake to the face, and go down in one shot. Yikes, that was painful. Flying through Aaron, I try again against Bertha, but this time I save a Fire Blast for her Hippowdon, and I land it. And one shot the Hungry Hungry Hippo. Damn, that feels good. Halfway done with the Elite Four, we move on to Flint, the third member. It will be interesting since he gets a boost from the sun as well, although Sludge Bomb should mostly work. I start a battle with Iron Moth against Houndoom, I use Bug Bus to save PP, and since it's also neutral, but doesn't KO. I use it again after a dark pulse, but he uses a full restore. I one hit KO and finish it off in result. Wait, what? He sends out Iron Moth too? That's right, I purposely chose Infernape to be replaced so that Link uses one himself in the battle. And since he probably has Chlorophyll, this can be interesting. I outspeed, use Fire Blast, and almost one shot, but it uses Earthquake. Right, I forgot to replace its moveset. <laughs> 
Oops. Anyways, I survive in the yellow, use Sludge Bomb for a guaranteed hit and take the Cursed Moth out. Third comes out Flareon, which takes a Sludge Bomb only to faint. Fourth is Rapidash, it has the same fate. And finally comes out Magmortar, the big chonker. I use Sludge Bomb, which thankfully also takes it out. Hooray! With only Lucian left, let's see if the specifically learned Bug Buzz will help us out here. I start a battle against Lucian and his Mr. Mime, only to realize that I didn't heal. <laughs> God damn you retro with your stupid memory. Anyways, with a nice bug buzz, it doesn't do anything. It has soundproof, of course. That happens when I don't do any research. Okay, plan B. Let him cook with a fire blast. With the light screen setup, it still goes down, but it will be a possible pain for the remainder of the battle. Comes out Espeon, I use bug buzz, which doesn't KO, and the result, Predacon goes down. Stupid soundproof. Attempt 3. Paint to the Iron Moth, thanks to missing fire blasts. Cool. Attempt 4 ends with the exact same loss, god damn it. With almost level 84 on attempt 5, I run through the previous Elite 4 members yet again and start a battle against Yushin yet again. This time against Mr. Mime, I use Solar Beam for a guaranteed hit, which one shots the Mr. Memer. In result of not getting a light screen, Espeon and Alakazam with a crit 2 go down to Bug Buzz. I use Fire Blast even though it may have heat proof and led it to one shot it. Next up is Galatia which I use Bug Buzz against and only does half. He heals from Citrus Berry and does half with Psycho Cut. To finish it off, I use Solar Beam and close off the segment with a nice Elite Four. Only know the big menace Cynthia is left. Before the champion, I finally remember to heal up and use Elixir for the PP and go to face off against Cynthia. Our eyes meet and the battle starts. With our precious Dorito chip bot, I start a battle with a Fire Blast against her Spiritomb. RNG is nice again and lets the Fire Blast land and also one shot it. Next is instantly her ace Garchomp with a stressful click. I click Fire Blast, which lands and doesn't take it out. A massive earthquake lands, a finishing blow on us. Huh, I really thought fire was neutral against dragon. Me, I guess this is why I don't do challenge videos as my main content. Nice Aya opener. Attempt 6, I lose against Hifaldor since I miss. Attempt 7, go down to Bronzong while missing fire blast. On attempt 8, and being now on level 87, I finally reach Cynthia again. Fire Blast against Spiritomb, I land it and take it out. This time against Garchomp, I use Solar Beam which also doesn't take it out. Oh well, here we go again down to Earthquake. Before I try attempt 9, I search around for the EB berries to reduce and gain a bit more of a buff. I find the Grappa berry, later also Qualit berry. Plant it and thanks to computer magic, make the time go faster to get more. I mean, I can wait for them in real time, but this just speeds up the process for the exact same result. Anyways, I decrease defense at special defense and instead I increase my special attack EB but turns out my special attack was pretty much already at max. Just to have something, I go against some defense EVs so I have a chance to survive against Earthquake. Although unlikely. I go to Iron Island, train with the Riley since I saved him later for possible training and it paid off. Later I head to Floroma Meadow to get Miracle Seed for an extra boost for Solar Beam to hopefully deal enough damage. And for good measure, before I try again, I train to level 90 in the victory Road. Now that I've done some extra training, let's try attempt 9. I easily run through the Elite 4 this time and reach Cynthia. Like before, I use Fire Blast on Spiritomb and take it out. Forgot to turn on Battle Scene after grinding, oops. Now Garchomp. Let's try Solar Beam yet again. With the extra boosts, it is enough to one hit KO it. Perfect. Solar Beam takes out my Low Tick. Togekiss goes down to Fire Blast after missing the first one. Lucario goes down in flames as well. Last comes out Roserade that goes down to, guess what, a Fire Blast also. With a finishing blow, we can finally get the answer to the video's question. Yes, you can beat Pokemon Platinum with an awkwardly inserted Iron Maw from Generation 9. If you liked the video, comment and let me know if you would want to see more videos like this. Now I know there were some finicky errors and mistakes that I made, but now that I've done this and and learned and had my experience, I think I could do better in the future. But anyways, other than that, stay tuned.